Hi everybody. Uh, I would like to show yet another game played by Alpha Zero against Stockfish about a year ago, but it was published late last year. That I enjoyed a lot, and I don't think this game was um, uh, was of any of huge attention of uh, main uh, chess stream media. Um, so, but I really think that everyone can benefit from this game. Uh, what I liked about it is that I can understand all the moves that Alpha Zero played. Like almost literally all the moves. Let's say 90, 95%. Like there's one or two moves that I don't get out of 55 games, 55 moves of this game. So uh, Alpha Zero wasn't provided any opening um, explorer. Uh, I think the same applied to Stockfish. So they were both playing on their own. Stockfish was given a powerful computer with decent settings. And Alpha Zero doesn't need that, uh, mm, that power because it's artificial intelligence. So let's take a look. c4, knight f6, knight c3, bishop to b4, queen c2. Alpha Zero doesn't want to double pawn. So castle, a3, grabbing the two bishop advantage that it will eventually make use of like literally 50 moves later. d6. Uh, Stockfish wants to fight for some dark squares with e5 move. So, and now take a look at every single move played by Alpha Zero. First of all, we're in the opening phase. What are you supposed to do in the opening? You're supposed to develop pieces and castle your king, right? Um, for lower rated players, I strongly recommend castling as fast as you can which was not the case white spent time on queen c2 a3 etc now white plays b4 more sophisticated players can um, mm, well assess uh, you know weigh the damages of leaving the king in the center for a few moves longer uh, in this case the position is closed well not closed but it's not open and it's not gonna open up anytime soon so alpha zero decides that it can develop the bishop first and i agree b4 grabbing some space bishop to open to diagonal which will open up eventually knight bd7 now it's time to castle your king e3 rook e8 d3 slightly controlling the center knight f8 bishop e2 a5 we're not taking those pawns that usually a poisoned one. Castle, bishop to g4. So white castled the king, uh, but it's not still not so clear what to do. When you have two bishop advantage, um, you're supposed to open up the position. If the position becomes very close, the knight could be actually stronger than the bishop. But if the position can open up, the bishop would be stronger. So white should try to open up the position somehow, but it's not that clear how you can do that at the moment. So h3, it's actually very often a useful way to deal with bishop g4, bishop g5 moves. You immediately ask the question to that bishop. Are you gonna take my knight on f3? Well, thank you. I would uh, have two bishop advantage even more stronger than if you keep this bishop. If you come back, well, when I made a useful move. And if you go bishop h5, you're like committed to standing on this diagonal. You cannot go backwards anymore. So what does alpha zero do now? It's not that clear how you can open up the position. Uh, and it's you cannot really create a plan in this position at the moment because the pawn chains are so flexible. So Alpha Zero wants to clarify the position on the queen side at first to focus then on in the center. So how does it do? It moves the queen back to c2. The queen doesn't like to be bothered by possible knight jumps like e4, knight e4 maybe. No, there's mate on g7. Basically, it's preparing bishop c3 and maybe black would take and then white can like h6 useful move bishop c3 White is asking the question now white is ready to take that pawn because that pawn wouldn't be poisoned That would be an extra pawn and b file would open and that would be a weakness So black has to do something if black takes now white can fight for the a file um, and um, Probably white would win that fight and then wouldn't be too pleasant for black. So uh, Stockfish plays b6 and like in other game that uh, uh, in many games this alpha zero is doing the following once the pawns are like this it is going b5 and claiming that's a weak square in the long run you white will benefit from it 
much much later in the future but it can comprehend and understand these kind of things so b5 getting some space and creating a weakness on c6 knight to d7 now rook goes to the center white is preparing d4 knight c5 black found a well sort of outpost bishop to a1 bishop doesn't like to be bothered bishop to g6 now there's a pin white really wants to go d4 to open up this guy which has no well opponent so you gotta do that but the queen is in the way so queen goes to b2 preparing a battery knight to a4 queen to a2 knight to c5 basically white won a tempo white moves the queen for free to a2 where nobody can bother it and now it's action time it's d4 e takes d4 and knight takes d4 so knight is going to a weak square on c6 or at least aiming that way now this diagonal is open and white would have much better potential in the center by the way due to this pawn on b5 that is dominating the queen side bishop to e4 and here's the move that i really like played by alpha zero in other games it is doing the same two bishop advantage is a tricky thing to deal with um, there's a saying that the beauty of uh, having two bishop advantage is that at some point you can trade one of the bishops for uh, other benefits like doubling pawns creating weakness etc but alpha zero in this case does an amazing job it goes bishop f3 because this bishop on e4 is very powerful if it goes let's say i would maybe aim for f3 e4 plan grabbing some space in the center but then this guy on e2 would be like a horrible it would be like a huge pawn in my opinion if f3 e4 happens so alpha zero decides that i don't need that bishop anymore bishop to f3 bishop takes f3 and now amazing move i'm not sure if i would have played it myself g takes f why would you double pawns weaken your king without no need why would you do that i think most of chess players would choose knight takes f3 and then slowly try to play in the center maybe knight comes back maybe knight maneuvers to d5 through like long route like this maybe then white goes f3 e4 f4 etc that would be another reasonable plan but alpha zero in many games opens up the g file and claiming i have this bishop you have no opponent now it is very clear what i should do now I'm just attacking your king. Even though the position is not closed, in this case, white is so dominating the center and that bishop is so powerful that white can do that. Open up the king and open the g-file. Now pay attention, knight f to e6, to every single move played by alpha zero. Once it realizes a clear target, a clear plan, with every move it is going in that direction. With every move it's improving one of its pieces or the position in general. So what do we do? The king on g1 is misplaced, the rook should go there, king h2. Knight takes d4. Do we take with the bishop or do we take with the rook? Taking with the pawn is awful. Blocks the bishop and uh, those pawns would be weak. It takes with the rook because rook will have potential here. King h7. Queen c2 check, improving the queen. Now black goes g6. Aha! Weakness created. Good job. But we're not done yet. Improve the rook with a tempo. Queen is 7 Improve another rook. Rook g8. What do we do now? Hmm. h4. We want to go h5. And that would be really hard to handle for black. This pressure on those diagonals. So black goes h5. Aha. Another weakness created. Let's go. But there's a fork on e6. Alpha 0 doesn't mind giving up. And in this case, it's not giving up. There's some rook e4 move if you really don't feel like giving it up well actually rook h5 mate in one is coming but um, you'll see why i refer to um, to exchange a sacrifice in a minute king goes to h6 now what do we do now all our pieces are very active now it's time to push some pawns e4 grabbing more space and controlling more squares knight to e6 but it's a blunder well it's not a blunder it's a positional sacrifice now rook goes to f6 newly created weakness knight takes g5 pawn takes g5 well you always need some small calculation to support your moves like king g5 queen d2 h4 queen f4 mate so king goes back to h7 what do i do now white is exchanged down black is very solid 
white is slowly improving its position. How do you do that? You control more, more squares with f4. White improved his position. Queen d3. Well, this pawn is still immune because of rook f7. So queen d3 slightly improving the queen. The queen is going there. Rook g7, f3, freezing the center, dominating the center. White is uh, like... Usually they teach this is the center, but I think uh, I would call the following eight squares like accelerated center and white is dominating it. That's why white is basically winning here. King g8, what do I do now? Improve the queen, king f8, improve the bishop. This a4, I'm not 100% understand why is it so useful. I don't know, it's just a tiny improvement. Bishop is improved on c3 because on a1 it's functioning just on one diagonal and on c3 it's functioning on two diagonals and maybe it will have uh, uh, some things to do on other diagonals. So that's why it's a tiny improvement. Rook d8, now it's time to improve your king. Rook d7. f5, creating another weakness. G takes F, well, this was a huge threat. G takes F, rook F5. White created more weaknesses. Where it is? It's on H5. Now that pawn is loose. Queen F6, who's gonna get it? The king personally himself. Rook E7, Queen D5, slight improvement of the position. Rook G6, King H5, winning the pawn. Every single move is understandable and slightly improving the position. Rook E8, you can see that black has zero counterplay. Bishop to F6, improving the bishop dominating even further in the inside to black's position. Queen d7, king g4, there's not much to do on the h-file. Now white is ready to uh, to use the h-file. Rook c8, black wants some sort of counterplay with c6. Not gonna happen. Remember, b5 played when it was played. Let me see the text. Move 16, b5 was played. If that pawn was on b3, white couldn't be dominating the place so much because c6, d5 would always be on the table. c6 would control a lot of squares. But b5 played on move 16, it's move 49. Because of that move, white can dominate the place. Queen e8, queen takes e8, exchanging. And now it's time the rook is coming. The rook is coming here or there. And now rook f6. Well, that's a desperation, I would say. But white's plan was basically unstoppable f4, f5, rook goes to h7, black will not hold this position, so stockfish just collapses like this. And after that, it's white is pawn up and still dominating. So, not much to comment, f4, f8, e5. And now that pawn on f6 would be, would be unstoppable after some e6 move in the future. So, that was it. I love this game because it is so understandable in my opinion if you compare it to other engines games like if you see stockfish komodo matches half of the moves i do not comprehend i do not understand why do they play it and that's why they actually ruined human chess a little bit they beat us all the time those engines we don't understand why they make those moves and we try basically like uh, uh, copy the moves without understanding them that's why a lot of GMs have problems like uh, the engine said that position was good. But if you sit over the board, you don't understand why. It's for engine understandable why it's good, but not for human, human eye. In this game, what I love, I understand almost every single move played by Alpha Zero. And it feels so smooth and natural. But the thing is, you can really learn from it. If the position is uh, quiet, like in this case, when the plan is clear, with every move, you slightly improve the position. You shouldn't waste time on unnecessary moves. Every move, you improve the position. Starting once the G-file got opened, that's it. Every move improves one of the pieces. Improving the king, improving the rook, improving the queen, improving the rook, improving the rook, creating more weaknesses, improving the rook, improving the position, improving the rook, positional sacrifice, Improving the position, getting more space, improving the queen, improving the center, improving the queen, improving the bishop. Well, this one I'm, I'm not sure. Rook d8, improving the king, creating more weaknesses, improving the king, improving the queen. Every single move is improving the position. I love it. Improving the king and after that improving the bishop, improving the king, stopping any counterplay exchanging queens and now the rook is coming in and 
black basically resigned with the uh, rook to f6 move that's it brilliant game we all can learn from it i hope you enjoyed it take care goodbye